Okay, so we're today going to do the respiratory components of our half skull and the part of the torso that we can see on here. We can first of all see the external nares or nostril, which is what leads into the nose. The external nares leads to the nasal vestibule, which is the portion of the nose that hangs off your face, if you will. It's this beginning part of the overall nasal cavity. At the top of the nasal cavity, we can see the ethmoid bone, more specifically the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. And coming through the holes of the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone, we can see the olfactory nerves, the little white lines descending into the nasal cavity. We can also see the crystagalli, the prominent ridge of bone that sticks up in the middle of the ethmoid bone. As we work our way down into the nasal cavity, we can see the three nasal concha, the superior nasal concha, the middle nasal concha, and the inferior nasal concha. Below each nasal concha is the nasal meatus. So here we have the in or superior meatus, middle meatus, and inferior meatus, working our way down the nasal cavity. At the back of the nasal cavity, we can see the posterior nasal aperture, this space that we can see, my finger bouncing back and forth across. In the posterior nasal aperture, we can see the opening of the pharyngeotympanic tube, this small dark spot. We can also on this skull see the frontal sinus, these spaces up here in the frontal bone, the sphenoidal sinus, this peanut-like shape that we can see in the sphenoid bone, and on the cheek we can see the maxillary sinus, so three of the nasal sinuses that exist. As we get to the back of the nose, we now find ourselves entering the pharynx. The pharynx is this tube that runs from here to here, and it's divided into three regions. The nasopharynx goes from the top here to where my thumbnail is now. The space in the back of the mouth is the oropharynx, and from the epiglottis down to the dividing point between the esophagus and the larynx is the laryngeopharynx. So nasopharynx, oropharynx, laryngeopharynx as we work our way down. At the top of the mouth, we have the hard palate, this ridge of bone right here, which eventually extends back as the soft palate. The soft palate ends ultimately in the uvula, the dangly bit at the bottom. At the back of the or bottom of the opening of the mouth, we can see this thin blue line which is representing the epiglottis. The space between the epiglottis and the uvula is represented by the fossies. If we go back up into the nasopharynx, we can see the pharyngeal tonsil located on the back of the, the wall right here. If we go into the region of the oropharynx, we can see the palatine tonsil located at this spot right here. Now as we keep working our way down from the laryngeal or from the laryngeopharynx, we can see the esophagus, this tube extending back here, and we can see the larynx coming forward. The larynx of course has the laryngeal inlet and laryngeal vestibule, where my finger is now. Vestibular fold is the top lip, vocal fold is the bottom lip, and we can see here a little bit of the thyroid cartilage as we descend down towards the trachea. Now on this particular mouth we can see the oral cavity, the large space that we represent in here. If I switch models over, we can now see the tongue, which of course fills a large, or a large component of the oral cavity.